Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to learn how to create a simple scene in Decentraland. Join me on your terminal or command line application on your computer. Go into any folder and we're going to create our project folder. For that, we use the command mkdir, short for make directory. And let's create a folder called hello Decentraland. So now the folder exists. You can enter the folder with the command cd followed by the name of the folder. So now we are inside of the folder. In here, we can use the command dcl, which is short for Decentraland. You can only use this command if you have Decentraland installed. So make sure you do have it installed. Then you can use dcl init. This is going to initialize a new Decentraland project. You can select a project type using the arrow keys like scene, smart item, or smart wearable. I'm going to choose a scene because we're building a simple Decentraland scene. Hit enter and this will install the dependencies into your project folder. You should have about 50 packages. Then you can call DCL start to see the scene. So if you type in DCL start and hit enter, this is using the Decentraland start command. You can see that we are checking first that we have the latest SDK installation and that we have the Decentraland libraries. Then we are using our project and we are in development mode. This is the directory that we're currently in. We're processing the game.typescript file we're bundling some files and then the compiler is going to watch for file changes. And now we can view our preview server. So your browser should automatically open to localhost at port 8000. So I will show you what that looks like. Here is what you should see. You should see this Decentraland scene where you can click on the scene and then you can run around using your arrow keys. You can jump using the space bar and you can also use your mouse if you click and hold and rotate around just by moving your mouse you can rotate around Again, you can run you can jump you can interact with objects like this cube all right so this is the decentraland scene and again you should have your browser automatically open to the scene to get control of your mouse again, you hit the escape key at the top left-hand corner of your browser. You can also check what's in your backpack at any time. You can see the minimap in the top left. You can chat at the bottom left. You can click on your avatar in the top right and see elements like your body, your head, your top, your bottom, your shoes, accessories, and collectibles. So you can change up the appearance of your avatar, such as what they're wearing, shoes, accessories, collectibles, and again, you can close. At the bottom right, you see some details about the scene, such as the configuration, the duration, the game time, the UTC time, the network that we're currently running at. So we're running at the mainnet with the realm of local host. So we are running Decentraland locally on our computer, which means we're the only ones that can play. We see our frames per second and how many bad frames there were. In my browser to access Decentraland, just go to localhost at port 8000. That means the URL is 127.0.0.1 colon 8000. And you can refresh the page to get a new avatar each time. All right, so that is how you can create a new scene. Now, what are the project files behind this scene? Well, let's take a look at our project files. I'm going to hit escape to get my mouse again, and I'm going to jump into my terminal. You can stop the run of the server at any time with the command control C. That is going to exit the connection. Okay, so now you can still move around, but if you refresh the page, you'll get unable to connect because when you refresh the page, well, now you no longer have a connection to the server because we killed it in the terminal. Next, let's take a look at our project files in our Hello Decentraland folder. 
We have a folder called bin where we have game.js and game.js.lib. These are the compiled versions of our game. We have images that may be used in the game. Node modules will store all of the packages that the game requires to work. The source folder contains game.ts where we have some basic primitives that we've added to the game. So up here we have a class called rotator system where we're using our engine to get a component group transform. This group will contain every entity that has a transform component and then update every frame of the game. We are going to loop through all the entities and we're going to get their transform components and we're going to rotate them. And then we also have engine.addSystem where we're adding a new instance of the rotator system to the engine. We have a spawner function where we spawn a cube. We create a new cube as a new entity. Then we add a transform to the entity, setting its position. Then we add a shape to the entity, a box shape to create the cube. And then we add the entity to the engine. So this is what allows us to see that cube that we jumped on. Then we spawn the cube by calling the function and we're passing in the x, y, and z for that cube. And that is going to be the position. Then in the cube, whenever we click on the cube with this on pointer down, we're going to get the cube's transform component and scale it on the z-axis, which means we're going to increase the cube's size on the z-axis. We're also going to increase the cube's size on the x-axis. And we're going to spawn a new cube at a random location every time we click on the cube. All right, so we can test that out by launching our server again with DCL start and waiting for Decentraland to load this scene. And we'll be able to see that we'll have that cube, which we added with that script. That script was created for us by default. There's the cube, and if you click on it, it's going to change its size. And as well, it's going to spawn a new cube at a random location each time. Okay, so we can hit escape to get our mouse again. And look, the cube is actually hitting us. So we can see that we are increasing the scale on the z-axis, but decreasing the scale on the x-axis. All right, so that was a preview that we just checked out. As well, in this folder, we have a DCL ignore file. This is going to list the files to ignore when uploading the project to Decentraland. And we also have a Docker file, which lists some commands like creating an app directory, installing Decentraland, installing app dependencies, and bundling the app source. We also have a package lock.json, which is a locked version of package.json. So typically you can edit package.json, but you don't want to edit package lock.json. It will update on its own. Package.json lists out the metadata of the project, such as the name, the version, the description, and the scripts. So you can call npm start to call dcl start, npm build to call build ES ECS. You can call npm watch, npm deploy now, npm ECS install, npm ECS install next to install some longer commands or to use longer commands in a shorter form. So these are just aliases for longer commands. We also have development dependencies. So dependencies that are only required for development mode. We also have a readme created by default which lists out some helper suggestions for how you can install the command line interface, how you can preview the scene, how you can deploy to Decentraland, how you can deploy to a free server, and more resources. We also have scene.json. This lists out the JSON data describing the scene, such as the spawn points, the camera target, the main game file, the contact, the owner, so more metadata about the scene. And finally, we have TypeScript configuration.json, tsconfig.json, where we list our compiler options. Do we allow JavaScript? Do we want strict typing? What files are we including? And what are we extending? All right, so that is the contents of 
a new Decentraland project. Join me coming up next. We're going to continue this project and learn how we can modify elements in the scene. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.